Hello, Internet. My name is Wingsome, and today I'm going to show you how I made this clock inspired by chaos from the game Haze. Hey, everyone. It's Wingsome from the future here. And I'm here because I need to be so honest with y'all. This build was a mess. And I actually put together like a completed build video the way that I would normally do a video, but I wasn't happy with it because it felt super disingenuous given that the clock, um, it doesn't work very well. But I did build the thing, so I'm going to show you what I did. Um, so what we're going to do is I future wing some. I'm going to narrate over all the other video that I took during this build process to show you, like, what things went wrong. Some things went right because it still looks pretty, so there's that. Anyway, this won't surprise most of you because really you can buy anything online. But there are actually, like, a lot of commercially available DIY kits for clocks, and I almost definitely should have just used one of those. But instead, I decided to disrespect my own time and money by making a mechanically worse clock. I don't know how many people would actually put out a whole video describing one of their worst builds, but... I, however, mean to tell you such a tale. Listen carefully. After building a quick prototype of a lever escapement mechanism, I decided that was enough mechanical planning to move on to software and hardware. The high level overview of the software is pretty simple. I don't want to listen to the ticking all the time, so the clock has a paused mode and a keeping time mode. When in paused, the clock won't tick. The clock switches back and forth between the states on the click of a switch. Also, the chaos gate eyes have this rainbow around them, so I wanted to add some lights too. This software plan informs the electronics that I've chosen. I'm using an Arduino Pro Mini that I already have lying around. I got some NeoPixel rings from Adafruit that can be combined in series to one data line. And I also got a MOSFET driver to drive the solenoid. I'll need a switch to flip the clock into paused and keeping time modes. A lot of switches require some kind of pull-up resistor here to switch between a positive voltage signal and ground, but the Pro Mini actually has an internal pull-up on this pin, so we can leave it off here. Also, I ended up moving the switch to a different pin for geometry reasons. The software and the circuit can be found in a Git repo linked below and on my website. Not that I would necessarily recommend using this hypno-level disaster of a project as a guide. Armed with my circuit and a real loose software plan, I put together a solderless breadboard prototype and yay, it works! Ish! The lights go in a cute little circle and the solenoid ticks. It is going in the wrong direction, but that can be fixed with some geometry. At this point, some of you probably have a few guesses for how that quote unquote fixing went wrong. With the base prototype working, I'm moving on to designing the gear train. This gear train CAD file is available on my website, but eagle-eyed viewers may have already spotted at least two reasons not to use this file. Unfortunately for me, I do not notice my error until I'm in too deep. Because I am who I am and who I am is married to an unnecessary level of aesthetic, I've added some fun patterns to the gears, like bat wings for the Furies and the symbol of Hades. I printed these on the Anchor Make, which prints this handy dandy support material which can be easily removed. With these gears printed, I decided to make a little test rig, checking periodically to see if the gears can still move freely. Future Winsome here. I'm about to show you a clip that I recorded mid build that looking back now is like comically short-sighted but i believe in the transformative power of looking your own hubris in the eye and reveling in how bad it makes you feel so roll that tape 
So I've made the very brave and probably kind of reckless decision to just go ahead and cut the final backing for this clock, like the one with the design on it, everything, and then just do the rest of the testing for the gear train on the actual final backing. This might be a bad idea, but I'm impatient. So we're going to do it anyway. The problem with this test rig is that I didn't think very hard about it when I made it. So it's not very good. And the whole thing kind of shakes and rattles, which makes it really hard to do the final like fine tuning on the gear train. And I'm too lazy to make a better test rig and then also the final. So I'm just going to make the final. And if that doesn't work, that is a future me problem. This is not going to surprise you at this point in the video, but that did not end up working out for me. Uh, which we'll get into in a little while. But first, as a treat, we're gonna take a break for some fun design stuff. Let's pay Chaos a visit then. Happily, the Chaos Gate is symmetric, so I can just draw the eyes once and then reflect them. Unlike our boy Zagreus with his mismatched eyes. I took my 2D design and separated it into layers so that all of the background colors and also some clock ticks were on the back face of the clock. Then I layered in all of my fancy gears. And then finally, I put the detail elements of the eyes at the top face. I'm also planning on cutting the center of the eyes out of a translucent acrylic so that light can shine through them. I'm up to my usual shenanigans, doing that fake woodworking where I laser cut everything and then glue it together in a big stack and weigh it down with our handy dandy emergency water. Using a die cutter, I cut out some shiny pieces of wrapping paper to put over the gears so that they look pretty instead of just being a tragic PLA black. I used a spray glue to adhere these pieces of wrapping paper to the front of the gears. I almost definitely should have waited until I was like sure things were going to work out since the paper kept getting messed up during the rest of the build, but I like shiny things and not delayed gratification. Honestly though, pleasantly surprised at how nice this wrapping paper ended up looking. For the slightly less intricate parts, I found some thicker metallic wallpaper that I cut to shape. Uh, the real tea is that I tried to do this for all of the parts, but it was too thick for the little bitty details, so those ended up just being wrapping paper. I used epoxy to attach acrylic to wood, and wood glue to attach wood to wood. I then used epoxy to attach my metal bearings to the insides of the frame. Friends, I should have known that a single bearing was not going to be sufficient to keep things straight, so everything is all tilty and not aligned. But I came up with a hacky solution which involved printing a little rig for the back and with a second set of bearings to hold everything in place. Voila! Spinning gears. I glued the back face of the case in so that I could sand stain and finish the entire case all together. This part actually went well, probably because I have now done this exact process a number of times, and it's kind of relaxing. With the case ready, I soldered all of the electronics to a protoboard to make the whole circuit a bit flatter, and then I put in all of the gears. So immediately ran into a problem. I had fully intended on screwing in standoffs. You can see the screw holes there. Uh, so much so that I even went to the hardware store this morning to get the correct size screw. But what I didn't realize is that because I actually decreased the distance from the gears to the backboard of this clock, that the uh, while the board fits underneath, the board plus the microcontroller on top does not fit underneath this gear anymore. So I'm going to do um, the best quick fix that there is and just hot glue everything in place. 
Um, can you even believe that they've given me a whole engineering degree? Um, because I can't. <laughs> So anyways, after accepting my fate and deciding to just soldier forward with this project, I soldered all of the wires that poke around the back so that the other eye connects with the main electronics. Getting very close to the end, some of you watching at home may have noticed that we are missing something very important for a clock, which is of course the hands. Um, I've made the hands out of the big weapon sweep attacks in the game uh, based on the size of those sweeps. So of course the largest one, and this is a mild spoiler which I already warned you about, is the ore from Charon, his big sweep attack, that secret boss, uh, when you uh, borrow money from him and then he absolutely wipes the floor with you. Um, the next is of course Daddy Hades got a big ol' sweep attack from his trident. And then the smallest, of course, is our short king, Zagreus, who uh, makes the smallest with his spear, which is, of course, a Biden. Get it? Bye. Originally, I had grand plans to make these, like, maybe screw-on or adjustable so that I could, like, change the time easily on this clock. Um, but then I got really tired. So instead, I'm just going to, and this probably won't surprise anybody who's watched any of the videos on my channel, I'm going to hot glue them in place. Uh, it won't be easy to adjust the time. So in addition to the solenoid occasionally missing a tick or two when uh, the seconds are ticking, it will also be incorrect half the year during daylight savings. And whenever I turn off the ticking so that I don't have to hear the incessant noise, it'll also slowly fall to a incorrect time. And you know, that's okay because this clock is more about aesthetic than telling time. And honestly, what's more chaotic than this clock becoming more and more inaccurate throughout the inexorable march of time based randomly upon whether or not uh, things work? I thought about using more epoxy to adhere the acrylic parts of the front face to the wood parts, but I'll be honest with you, I got tired. So I ended up just using the easier and perfectly sufficient hot glue method for these parts. I glued all of these wires in place and then immediately realized the whole thing looked kind of empty in the front. So I cut out new acrylic pieces in red and then undid all of my glue handiwork and then re-glued all the wires back in place. Adding the extra red acrylic with a little bit of additional hot glue wrangling of some of the wires managed to cover up most of my design sins. So here's the final result. She kind of stutters like a fiend. This is the part of the video where I would normally explain all of the lessons that I learned throughout the build and my god, there were a lot of lessons that I learned this time. Like for example, the fact that even though I tested out the full gear train with my circuit and it seemed to tick just fine, even adding a little bit more weight in the form of the clock hands was enough to just sort of put the whole thing out of whack. I also learned that the Arduino Pro Mini and I, not friends. The most important thing that I learned in this process was about how I spend my time on my hobbies because I am really tired of this project and I could fix the various things that are wrong with it mechanically but I'm not going to because I'm burnt out and what that tells me is that when I started getting tired when the project started to be draining what I should have done was step back a little and take a break maybe work on a different project and then you know I could have come back to this when I was actually ready with a fresh mind but what's done is done and honestly no regrets because it still looks rad as hell. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, even though it was like a little chaotic. 
please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and want to see more builds. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Try to be patient with yourselves and with each other. And I will be back with another video as soon as I can pull together enough free time to do another build. Bye-bye. Speak not of failure. Failure is the greatest instructor of all. Okay, bonus content for those who made it all the way to the end. I'm gonna show you how this clock is even worse than I thought it was because if you count backwards from the second hand, the minute hand and the hour hand actually rotate in completely the wrong direction. What happened was when I reversed the second hand to make it tick in the correct direction, I somehow completely forgot that this would change the direction of literally every other gear. I do not know why I'm like this and I also can't believe I'm gonna post this on the internet.